Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. And today we are finally reviewing the Christopher Ward C65 GMT. This is a new watch for 2018. Now, I did do an unboxing, so if you want to look at the packaging, my initial impressions, uh, do have a look back at that video. Um, so it's been a few weeks now. I apologize that it's taken a little while longer. Always running behind with my videos. And of course, before I get into this, I'll do a quick wristwatch check. And there it is, my beloved Rolex Explorer. I forget the reference, but uh, yeah, I talked about this recently. And I have it on a wonderfully distressed Coloreb handmade luxury Italian um, leather strap. And I think it just suits that tooltastic vibe marvelously well and uh, funnily enough the c65 here gmt also comes on i think this is italian made yeah this is an italian made leather strap um, also distressed um, entirely different color but we'll discuss that in just a moment a little bit of background on christopher ward itself before we get into it christopher ward was founded in 2004 in england uh, on a boat in the river thames of course by mike france peter ellis and christopher ward obviously their headquarters is in maidenhead they were the first to offer more affordable watches swiss made uh, predominantly although these days they have very impressive in-house calibers of their own their whole concept was to offer more affordable but high quality pieces by cutting out the middleman so to speak and you order entirely online on their excellent website these days i mean it's dime a dozen but they really were ahead of their time and their business model was something of a world first by exclusively selling their watches directly to their customers this cut out the traditional marketing and distribution costs and Christopher Ward watches were sold with lower margins. The brand combined its emphasis on technical quality and value. Prime example is their early advertising phrase, the cheapest, most expensive watches in the world. But these days they've grown uh, from their micro brand roots into a, a world renowned tour de force, you could say, uh, with some simply incredible uh, models, astounding um, array of types from flight watches to racing chronographs and some rather exciting new avant-garde pieces with proprietary movements as well. They did have a rebranding and I, I have to give you a little bit of perspective. I actually bought and owned the Christopher Ward in the very, very early days of the channel in the pre- uh, brand change. So to get them back in the studio, to get them back on my wrist is long overdue. So where are we at today? Well, here we are with um, this extremely striking vintage inspired GMT watch. So let's go over the basic specifications first. We'll start with the dimensions. The diameter is 41 millimeters. And I must point out that the bezel is flush with the case so it's an exactly 49 uh, 41 millimeters there height is 12 millimeters lug to lug we're looking just a smidgen under 47 millimeters and then we have a lug width of 22 millimeters so uh, a little bit larger um, than my previous christopher ward but definitely um a very slender piece. So the entire case is stainless steel. It's marine grade 316L. We have what's called a glass box sapphire crystal there. It does have AR coating. And as I turn it, you'll probably see that a uh, little flash of, of blue there. Now it does come on an oyster style bracelet version as well. I opted for the strap version because I just, I love this color. I just thought it was, it was quite alluring and and, and I think really complements the watch. Strap also includes what I like to call the bolt action um, spring bars, which just make changing them out an absolute doddle. The back of the strap is a softer calfskin, a white stitching on the outside. It is Italian leather. And as you guys know, the Italians are renowned for their high quality leather goods. Their mastery of um, leather products goes all the way back to um, the Etruscans, you know, the pre-Roman era. Um, so they really do know what they're doing. And it is very substantially, uh, it, it's, it's slightly thicker at the center. I would describe the brown as a kind of gingerbread brown, almost a, a buckaroo tan, slightly distressed. I mean, the texture, it's not as exaggerated as my collar up there, but uh, it has a really nice, pleasing texture to it. Now the case itself, we do get 
quite a lot of, of um, different contrasting finishings, uh, including a wonderfully wide beveled edge there, a brush top, lovely coin edge to that GMT bezel. The actual bezel itself is also brushed. We have the 24 hour markings in even numbers with dashes for the odd numbers. There's also a little loom pip at the 12 o'clock and then with engraved numerals with lacquer applied masterfully. I mean, this, and I have to say off the bat, whatever they've done to their cases, they've definitely stepped it up. The quality, the fit and finish, the sharpness of the edges, uh, the, the, the finishing itself, it, it's, it's just exquisite. This is, and I'm probably going to get flack for this, but I've got to be truthful, it's, it's of a luxury standard. It really is. It rivals anything that Omega put out, um, possibly even Tudor. And then, of course, we have a bead blasted finish, very subtle, but on the signed crown, and we see that new twin flag logo, which is what they call it, and it's very, very clever. We'll discuss that in just a moment. We have a screw-down case back with that perfectly faceted trident fork and again a bead blasted finish there so we don't have any crown guards and the knurling on the um the crown itself is is just perfection it really is it's it's a very nice substantial size that is quite ergonomic to use now let's discuss the dial because this is really interesting so the dial itself is a matte black the indices uh, which is a tritium inspired kind of faux patina. And what I love is that I haven't overdone it. It's, it's more of a sand, light sand tone, almost a moon mist yellow, very subtle. And it, the markers are actually embedded into the dial, if you see there. We have an embossed uh, twin flag logo, which, which I love. It's a very clever little nod to Christopher Ward's heritage. The cross on the left referencing the St. George cross, which of course is the flag of England, emblematic of the English really since the Middle Ages. And then the inverted cross, you could say, on the other side to the right references its Swiss heritage, it being Swiss made. So very subtle, but, but clever. And, and I really do like that. And being being a Brit, obviously, uh, is a little bit of England in there too. Now, it features just a simple minute indications around the outside that is slightly sunken. When I did the unboxing, I thought, oh, it's almost like a pie pan dial, but it's not quite. The loom is absolutely outstanding considering the rather modest size of the indices. Uh, we get a double marker at 12 for great orientation. All the hands have loom, including a tiny amount on the second hand. It's super luminova. And of course we have a clearly defined arrow hand for the GMT. So very easy to distinguish the GMT function. Now let's talk a little bit about that arrow hand because again, it's slightly faded to, I guess, a reference to the Rolex 1655. It's not a bright neon orange or a carrot orange in the traditional sense. It's more of a tangerine subdued orange in keeping with that kind of retro inspired look, the, the faded look. I apologize about, uh, we are joined once again by the, uh, the NYPD, <laughs> as always. We see the trident on the balance of the second's hand, which I really do love. It's a nice touch. And then we have the bezel, which is 120 click. The action to it is extremely solid. Um, it is unidirectional, which is a bit unusual. Um, however, once set, you can um, read up to three time zones on this. And it is, let me just check off camera. Oh, one more click, sorry. Yeah, it is very precise, very sturdy and uh, reassuring feeling. The hour and minute hands are kind of box. They're rather minimal, uh, fairly modern. And if you see on the tip, they're just ever so slightly cut off on the ends. They definitely work well with the style of the watch. So if we look at the layout of the dial, this is a bit of a bone of contention, um, especially for, for those not a fan of the new branding. We have Christopher Ward with just the C and W capitalized, rather unusually placed at the nine o'clock. And then with the embossed logo at the 12. Automatic GMT, now it says 150 meters there. It is not a screw down crown. However, 150 meters is you know, more than enough for swimming pools and all the rest of it. And then Swiss made 
just at the bottom, quite traditionally. I've never really been a fan of the new Christopher Ward branding. I don't mind it. It doesn't put me off the watch or inhibit me from enjoying the watch at all. Uh, I just really prefer the old one. For me, I just thought it was a little bit smarter. But I think actually with the date at three, which is also a negative, there is a, a fair amount of balance. One of the things I really do like about this uh, watch is the case and the stepped up kind of echinus or ovolo style, almost uh, as if it's the base of a Doric column um, that frames that glass. It does evoke that feeling of mid-century watches of the 60s very, very well. But at the same time, it is rather modern. In fact, actually, it balances that with a kind of um, modernist functional minimalism, which I, you know, I, I really do like. So what's inside uh, this handsome beast? Well, we have the ETA 2893-2, which operates at 28,800 vibrations per hour, a 21 joule movement with a 42 hour power reserve. As I pull out the crown all the way, you'll see the seconds has stopped, so it is hackable. If I put it to the first position, we get, and I turn it forward, it adjusts the GMT hand in one hour increments. And if I pull it the other way, or turn it, sorry, the other way, you can see we have quick set there for the date. In the first position, we have a manual wind, which I've got to say is really buttery smooth. So this is the Elabor level ETA. It has been subjected to a higher standard of adjustment and positional testing compared to the standard ETA. There is even some decoration, uh, possibly some blued screws and pelage work, although I haven't opened it up to, to check. But I have to say it is performing extremely well. On the Christopher Ward website, they state that it's about plus 20 to minus 20 a day. However, this particular one, I can um, quite happily report it's performing about plus seven, which is outstanding. Now, as standard with this level of ETA, you get the Nivarox hairspring, Inca block shock protection, as well as it being one of the thinner ETAs uh, that definitely assists the general uh, slenderness of the piece. So the big question is, how does this bad boy wear? Well, let's pop it on the wrist and find out. As you guys know, I have an extremely skinny six and a quarter inch wrist. However, it does wear gracefully. Uh, the positioning of the lugs, the way they angle downwards, it's positioned beautifully well. Having a smaller wrist, sometimes I fall foul of this, that there simply isn't a hole small enough. I've got to say that even for my minute wrist, um, there is a hole and it, and it just, I mean, I'm on the very last hole, as you see on that lovely brushed sign buckle, which I neglected to mention, but there you go. It's, it's, I've mentioned it now. I can get away with it perfectly well. Its slenderness makes this watch feel smaller. There is a lot of dial going on here, so very, very legible. The weight is 71 grams, and all those different surfaces, contrasting finishes, it, it gives off a really pleasing presence on the wrist, almost to the extremities of my wrist, but not... You know, I can just about pull this off. Obviously, it goes without saying, I would have loved it to be a little bit uh, smaller. But at the same time, I have to keep you guys in mind, this is a definite crowd pleaser. 75% of the audience, it's gonna be absolutely perfect. So anyway, let's summarize the watch. Okay, so we'll start with positives first. Well, undoubtedly, I think they've really hit a home run here. In terms of design, they've just pulled it off so well. It has a luxurious feeling to it. I love the little style cues. It's not just a blatant ripoff of the Rolex 1655, the famous Steve McQueen, although I can never understand why it's called that. I don't think I've ever seen a picture of him wearing it. But anyway, as you guys know, that is a highly desired, very expensive Rolex Explorer too. So they've taken key features like the hand, it being a GMT, just the general feeling of it, it has its own distinct character and identity, and I really do appreciate that. Definitely there's a um, some feeling of, of the glycine airman in there, the, the bezel especially. I love all the attention to detail, the fact that the, the, everything from the crown, the absolutely magnificent polishing, that dazzling crystal. It's a perfect blend of mid-century classicism, but at the same time, little 
nods to modernity with the hands. Vintage inspired, done wonderfully. Functionally, it performs exceedingly well. It really is obvious that this is the culmination of decades of experience. Christopher Ward do GMTs very, very well, but this is a much needed update to the Trident line. They've got the colors absolutely bang on, especially when it comes to the vintage or faux um, patinering there. Um, so many companies, even you know the big boy companies get it wrong. They just overdo it. It's restrained here and just adds to the refined feeling that this watch gives. It has a pleasing classiness to it. It's a very traditional look that I think is gonna age marvelously well over the years. There's a ton of delightful charm that this watch gives. It's just a gorgeous looking piece. I mean, it is pure class, undoubtedly. Lastly, I think it is outstanding value for money. Now, this is on sale. I think it's on pre-order at the moment, but probably by the time you're watching this in the future, uh, it will be released. It's a, around $1,000, although you could probably get it for less. Christopher Ward do do sales. Uh, so you'll probably be able to get it for a little bit less. And I'm going to say something that's probably going to ruffle a few feathers, but it's the honest truth. I think in terms of the quality, in terms of the design, its originality, what you get. Also, let's not neglect to mention that Christopher Ward have some of the best customer care that I can personally attest to. Um, they are extremely um, attentive and very friendly to deal with. They really care about their customers. So I have to factor into that, into the final price. It's excellent value for money. And let's not forget the luxurious high quality that is substantially improved compared to the, uh, the very first Christopher Ward uh, watches I experienced. Okay, so what are the negatives? Well, first of all, the bezel. I don't understand why it's unidirectional and not bidirectional. A little bit of a shame there. Maybe there's reason I just don't understand. The crown. Now, I was expecting to really dislike the crown, it not being screwed down. However, with 150 meters water resistance, which is very, very usable, uh, this is not a diving watch in the traditional sense. I actually like the crown being non-screw down because you can just top it up easily with the manual wind whenever needed. So I'm not gonna complain about that. This next uh, negative is rather predictable, but you know I'm gonna, I'm gonna say yes, why they didn't do a 38 millimeter version, I don't know. Perhaps they will do in the future. I would, you know what, I'll say it right now. If they did a 38 millimeter version of this, I'd probably buy it, I probably would. Yeah, for the smaller wrist, it would have been nice to have the more conservatively sized. And that is something that I really did admire about Christopher Ward. They were offering the midsize um, back in the day while the, the, the watch world was still very much in the grip of the uh, large watch trend. And I always found that refreshing about the brand. Why they don't do it with this um, absolutely um, resplendent GMT, I don't know. The very last negative I have to say is the lack of London on the dial. Now, while there is that little nod to England with the double flag embossed logo there, it meant something to me, not just being British, but it is largely forgotten these days, especially with the Swiss, Japanese, and to a certain extent, the German domination of, of the watch industry. We forget how crucial the British were. You know, a hundred years before Patek, Adumar Piguet, JLC, Breguet, and all the rest of them, Brits like Graham, Harrison, Kendall, um, Mudge, were really pushing the frontiers of, of horology and it's forgotten. Yeah, it's a big negative for me. Um, obviously, it's not gonna be as important for other people. So in conclusion, an absolute capo lavoro from uh, Christopher Ward. I think this just illustrates why they are worthy of your respect. And um, yeah, just an excellent all-round watch, sturdy, robust enough with a high enough quality. I mean, this, this actually, it, it, <laughs> It's one of those kind of do-it-all watches. On a strap like this, it's slender enough for formal and, and more smart attire, but at the same time, a very usable and functional design. Not entirely perfect, but I can say this. This is perhaps the best Swiss automatic GMT at $1,000, without a shadow of a doubt. A shout out to Christopher Ward, um, everyone that works there, and the main man himself 
for so generously lending this in. Uh, this actually will be given away at some point, so stay tuned. Again, thanks to uh, Christopher Ward for very generously um, offering uh, this watch uh, uh, for a gentry giveaway. So stay tuned for that. But yeah, so guys, I'm going to leave it there. Please don't forget to add your thoughts, queries, comments, opinions, all the rest of it down below. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. And as always, guys, I will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao. This is a public service reminder for the good gentry. Please follow us on Instagram, join the Facebook UGWC group and click on the bell to keep notified of new videos. Don't forget to keep it positive, keep it gentry, onwards and upwards. Thank you.